I tuned in with Dot Tone Designs here. Again, with another quick tip on some basic color separations, and I wanted to show you uh, some differences in these separation files. So, take a look at this. Typical file, right? Three colors, they're all spot colors, solid, spot color, low, mesh. And I'm in the art file Adobe Illustrator and I have it broken down into three different pages. And here's the main art, which is locked as you see up here. Um, that's the little lock icon. So I've got my original artwork intact. As you see, so that I can see my base white and top white, I've colored them two different colors. Uh, just a random pink and a random light blue. Um, they are, when you double click on them, you see that it's just, uh, I could, it doesn't matter what color it is, but I like to stay away from being 100% solid. I don't want to confuse the rip to make it think that it's CMYK, but this is chosen as a spot color. And I gave it the, <coughs> the name and the number in sequence that I wanted to print. And uh, that's for the reason, uh, purpose of uh, separation preview, which is um, I've explained before. But um, you know the color mode is CMYK, but it doesn't really matter as long as it's visually something different than I know that is a white ink that's going on um, the white background of my page here, so that I can see it. Same with the uh, top white. I just colored out another color, uh, or sorry, that was the top white we were talking about, but base white in the same scenario. Um, so as you see everybody thinks this this is the standard or basic way to separate and as you're starting out this is what everybody generally teaches and uh, but I want to tell you that this is not the best way. It's not the most efficient way for you to do your work and it's not a good habit. And the reason why it's not a good habit is because people, when they get used to this and putting each color on its own separate page, the problem with that is as your company grows and you get into using rips that um, need to recognize printing the colors in a stacked file over top of each other using layers as I've been doing here. As you see, I have this, uh, all of that artwork back there then my information here, and then the original art up here. And then I can break this down, and you see that this is built into individual layers, uh, elements. Um, what I want is one stacked page. I can get rid of all three of these and delete those, and I work from this alone. And as you see, um, I got my three colors here. It's all stacked up into one page. I then grouped them all, merged them all in uh, this one layer here. You can even name that main art. Um, but the, the difference is in uh, you will see how this works. When you send these files, it's important for you to know how to do this correctly and stacking and layering and telling things to multiply or, or uh, to overprint and not overprint this and overprint that and uh, and then you look in separation preview um, under CMYK mode under your uh, document color mode being in CMYK because if it was RGB you would see that this is grayed out so uh, I can simply change that back to CMYK and now when I click Overprint Preview, I have these first CMYK separations unchecked. And the reason why it, it requires CMYK is because some of the RGB color modes don't allow certain features and functions of like uh, transparency modes and certain things like that, um, layer effects don't work as well. Um, but in this, in CMYK color mode, um, you can turn off the eyeballs and view your underbase. 
And I know it's going to view properly because as I stack the other one that is colored um, from my top white, I can see that it's kind of creating this dark purple color. But I'm using a pink and a blue for my color. So why is that? It, well, it's because what overprint feature actually does is it kind of multiplies the colors together to give you a visual blend so that you can see the differences of what's going on here. And now you can see my trap built in and um, you can see that this underbase here is uh, being overprinted by my top white and you can see that the white is overprinting and has a little registration shift on the star there and then there's the red. Red goes down over top of that and you can see the little overlap here. All right, so that's all well and good and helps you a lot for color separation preview in your Adobe Illustrator file. But here's the biggest kicker that you don't see coming down the road is, um, let me turn this off, because when you are in preview of overprint, overprint preview mode, it's a little sluggish in moving around and, and previewing. So uncheck that and then you can bounce around real quick. You see how that is? Um, but what I want to say about this is you can uh, go to um, where artboards and delete all of these other three delete shows and this is your main file right this is what you want to have it set up as so you're just stacking the artwork over top of each other if you're building it that way um, like I said earlier but the difference is when you send these files to a direct to screen machine it's best to stack them and the reason being is uh, when people do send files separately let's say they they have this and then they all they want to create an underbase I know some people do this as well they'll go to file save the copy and then they'll just name it underbase right um, and then they'll delete everything out of there that doesn't print that is a color and they'll just have the underbase colors underneath there and they'll save that and they're sending two separate files the color file with you know three four five eight colors in there and then they send a separate file that's an underbase that's not efficient because your rip your programs that you're printing to using your direct to screen machine whether it, it's Douthit or an iMage or a laser machine. Two separate files read separately. Duh. So, um, you know, it's, it, it's rasterizing all this information. So if you've got artwork that's down here, you know, that's um, a color on the underbase, right? And then you've got all this red that reads. Well, when you're only viewing the red that's what you see okay so it's reading all this data in this page document down here and it, so the size of that file is, is different than this underbase right um, or if you've got your white rather so that size is going to be different those two different documents there um, kind of get pushed around in math and in, in placing it on the machine in the correct location. Um, your registration marks will move, will uh, line up correctly because the whole artwork, the artwork elements as a whole is all of this that you see active here that I've highlighted. But then as your as the file is reading all this negative space and it's plotting where it's going to put it on your other color, <coughs> That might look like this um, and it's a separate file it then kind of positions it a little bit differently it might be a hair uh, to the left hair to the right um, it, it could depending on some reps it mathematically it could be even a little bit longer depending on how they do that if it's a very long file um, 
you know, 18, 19 inch file or something. And the, the art content is physically 18 or 19 inches in length. Uh, some shops do print that big. So what I'm getting at is you should learn to set your files up this way so that you're in a good habit to begin with. Uh, stacked over top of each other, you, learning to use the uh, overprint feature, overprint fill, overprint stroke, and visually seeing your separations in your overprint before you send your file off to get imaged. Uh, this is like sending, uh, previewing your separations before you um, print the film. Same thing. It's a checkpoint. Some people buy a third-party program to do their proofs in or to see what the separations are actually going to look like because uh, you know when you look at this artwork uh, it looks one way but then when you see the separations it looks another way right so you got to check that make sure you're getting it right in a nutshell um, this is a let's say the number one way to set up your art files and uh, produce separations from in vector in Adobe Illustrator. This is the number one way, the stacking method. Adobe Illustrator teaches this in its books. When Back in the day when I used to come with books, um, you know, it was in the book on how to do color separations and this was the way they taught. Um, the multiple pages is another option for this kind of a workaround and that's the, like the secondary or tertiary um, the third type of uh, method of separating files uh, some people will take one file they'll delete all the red out select all the red and uh, if I can get the red select same fill color and then I'll delete that out. And then they'll also delete what's underneath of their under base and so on and so on. Um, so sending one file is the most efficient way to send your files even to your direct screen machines um, so that uh, you don't have any registration problems with your under bases and your top colors. When you send two separate files, it causes problems. I don't care what your sales rep says or your um, your people that work at the different um, direct-to-screen machines, manufacturing companies, whether it be M and R or Douthit, uh, doesn't matter. If they tell you, "Oh, there's no problem," there is no problem in general. But there's always that file, uh, you know three out of 20 that uh, is going to come out of misregistration and you're going to beat yourself up for days and days not knowing why. What's wrong with the art? What's wrong with the machine? Uh, then you're going to be calling a tech support and finding out why your your base whites don't line up and then they say, well, it might be your your sensors on the machine. It could be you know a lot of different things. And it boils down to it's your art file. And um, it's how you are sending the art file. Don't send two separate files for one art file. Um, that's the most efficient way. That's all I got to say. Thanks. Talk to you now.